Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is S and I make Rampai minigame tutorials. And as usual, I want to thank all of my Patreon supporters for supporting this channel. Thank you so much. And on the screen right now, you can see the names of the Patreons who are currently in the supporter tier, Ohio. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a fun little safe unlocking puzzle for your original novels, where the goal is simply to have the correct number combination and dial it in with the dial on the safe in order to unlock it. And as such, there won't be any points or scoring to this puzzle other than the reward that the player might get from opening the safe. So with that said, let's go ahead and have a look at the tutorial outline to see more in detail what we are going to implement in this tutorial. So the safe dial should be able to be rotated by first clicking on it and then dragging with the mouse. And the selected number on the dial should be shown on the screen clearly so the user can see what they picked. A safe combination is going to consist of four numbers and once the player has chosen these four numbers, an indicator is going to show if he got the safe combination right or wrong. And if it's correct, then the door is going to be openable by clicking on the handle. And to follow along with this tutorial, you're going to need a fresh Rempai project in the size 1280 x 720 pixels using the latest version of the Rempai engine. You are also going to need the tutorial image assets, which can be downloaded in the description box below. And it's also good to have at least some basic knowledge of how to program in Python, as we're going to be using Python in this tutorial. And the script for this tutorial is going to be available for download by my patrons in the tier supporter or higher once this tutorial has finished. So do check out my Patreon if you haven't already. So with that said, let's go ahead and open up our Rempai project and start coding. And as usual, I've gone ahead and cleaned up the script file a bit so that I'm only left with the start label. And before we go ahead and code, just make sure that you have downloaded all of the image assets as well as the audio assets for this tutorial from the link in the description box below. And once you've done that, you need to make sure that you're transferring these images into the images folder right here. And as you can see, we have quite a few images. And then the audio files into the audio folder right here. So the first scene in this tutorial is going to be a screen containing an image, which is the actual background image depicting the safe and then an image button that the user can click on in order to enter into the save combination minigame or puzzle. So let's go ahead and create this scene first. And we can first go ahead and make sure that we are calling this screen from the start label. So for that we can say call screen and we're going to call this screen scene one, like so. And then we'll go ahead and create a few empty lines above this start label. And then we're going to say screen scene one so in here we are first of all going to add the background image for this scene so we're going to say image and then the path to the image is going to be images scene one background dot png like so and as usual all of the images that i have provided for this tutorial is going to be twice as large as what we want to have them displayed on the screen. So we're going to make sure that we are resizing them to be half of their original resolution. And to do that, we are going to use a transform. So we can go ahead and create this new transform underneath this screen. So we're going to say transform half size and then zoom 0.5 like so. And then we're going to apply this transform to this image. So we're going to say at half size and then we will go ahead and add the image button so we're going to create a new line and then we're going to say image button auto and then the path to this image is going to be images scene one safe door and then percent s dot png like so so because we have said auto the image button is going to switch between the idle state and the hover state for this scene one safe door image. So that is going to be these two images right here. 
So then we are going to make sure that we also set this to half of its original size. So we're going to say at half size. And then we also need to add an action to this image button. So I'm going to go ahead and do that before this transform. So we're going to say action. And this is going to be a list of actions. So we're going to add two square brackets like so. So the first thing we're going to do is to show the actual save puzzle screen. So we're going to say show. And then we're going to call this screen save puzzle. And we want to show the save puzzle screen with a fade. So I'm going to add a comma after this string. And then I'm going to create a custom fade. So I'm going to say fade, like so, to use the fade function in Rampine. And then I'm going to say one, one, and one, like so. So this is going to create a fade that is going to fade in for one second. And it's going to hold the fade for one second, and then fade out for one second. And then the next action is going to be to hide this scene. So we're going to say hide scene one, like so. And now because this image is actually taking up the whole screen, but we only want to make sure that the opaque pixels of the image is clickable, we're going to add a focus mask. So we're going to say focus mask true, like so. So now before we go ahead and create the safe puzzle screen, we are first of all going to create a sprite manager object containing a sprite that is going to be the actual dial instead of the safe puzzle. And the reason why we are going to use a sprite manager for this is because it makes it easy for us to be able to detect different user events, such as when the user is clicking on the dial and then rotating it by dragging with the mouse. So to do that, we are first of all going to need an image for the dial that the sprite manager can use. So we're going to go down into the start label and then create a new line up here. And because we're going to create quite a few variables that relates to the dial, we are first of all going to create a comment that is going to say dial variables, like so. And then we can go ahead and create this variable. So we're going to create a dollar sign, like so. And then we're going to say dial image is equal to, and then we're going to add the path to the image, which is going to be images dial.png, like so. And because we are going to need to keep track of the size of the actual dial image, we're going to create a new variable containing this size. So we're going to create a new line. And then we're going to say dial size is equal to. And then we're going to create a tuple. So we're going to add two round brackets, like so. And the size for this image is 660. But since this image is going to be half of its original resolution instead of a game, we're going to divide this value by two. So we're going to say divided by two. And then for the height, we're going to do the same thing. And the height is actually the same value. So we're going to say 660 divided by two, like so. Now to make sure that the dial image is actually going to be displayed in half of its resolution, we're going to have to create a transform that is going to be parented to the actual sprite. And that is because a sprite cannot actually change in size by itself. So we have to make sure that the image that is inside of the sprite is changing instead. So for that, we're going to create a new line. And then we're going to say t is equal to transform. And then we're going to say child is equal to dial image. So we're adding the dial image as a child to the transform displayable. And then we're going to add a zoom property. So we're going to say zoom is equal to 0 0.5, like so. And then we'll create the sprite manager. So we're going to create a new line. And then we're going to say dial sprite manager is equal to sprite manager. So whenever we are creating a sprite manager object like this, we can also specify two functions that the sprite manager should use in different situations. And one of these functions is a update function that is going to run whenever the sprite manager needs to update. And then we have a event function that is going to run whenever a event is happening in the game. And that can be, for example, a user event where the user is pressing a key on the keyboard, clicking with the mouse and also some other events. 
And for this sprite manager object, we are only going to use one of these functions, which is namely the event function. So for that, we're going to say event is equal to, and we're going to call this function dial events, like so. So now that we have created the actual sprite manager object, we are going to go ahead and create a new sprite with this object. So we're going to create a new line. And then we're going to create a variable that is going to refer to this sprite so that we can then easily refer to this variable whenever we want to make changes to the sprite. So we're going to call this variable dial sprite. And to create the actual sprite object, we're going to refer to the dial sprite manager. So we're going to say dial sprite manager and then dot create so we're using the create method available to a sprite manager object to create a new sprite so the parameter that we're going to send in to this create function is going to be the transform displayable that the sprite is going to use as a child to display the actual image so we're going to say t like so so now that we have created the dial sprite containing the transform as a child which is in turn containing the actual dial image that is to be displayed on the screen, we're going to make sure that we are positioning this dial sprite on the screen. So to do that, we're going to create a new line and then we're going to refer to the dial sprite object. So we're going to say dial sprite and to position the dial sprite on the screen, we're going to use the X and Y attributes available to a sprite. So we're going to say dot X is equal to and to position the sprite on the x-axis, we're going to create a calculation using some variables to make sure that it is correctly centered. So the first variable we're going to refer to for this calculation is going to be a configuration variable called screen width. So we're going to say config dot screen width. So this variable is going to return the width of the actual project of our game. And then we're going to say divided by two to make sure that we are getting the center point of the screen on the x-axis. And then we're going to say minus dial size. And then we're going to grab the width of this dial size tuple. So we're going to add a zero instead of these two brackets, like so. And then after that, we're going to say divided by two. So now this calculation is first of all, going to make sure that the dial sprite is positioned at the center point of the screen. But because the dial sprite has the anchor point at the very top left corner of its bounding box, we need to make sure that we are subtracting half of its width. And that is going to make sure that the center point of the sprite is going to be positioned at the center of the screen. And then we are going to do the same thing for the Y axis. So we can go ahead and duplicate this line. And to duplicate a line instead of the Atom editor, you can simply press Ctrl Shift D on the keyboard. So now we're going to change this X to say Y instead. And then we're going to change the config screen width variable to say screen height instead. And then we're going to change the zero instead of these two square brackets to say one, like so. So now we are calculating the position for the sprite on the y axis instead of the x axis. So now that we have that done, we are going to continue by creating the safe puzzle screen. So we can do that above this transform right here. So we're going to say screen safe puzzle and in here we're first of all going to add the background image for this screen so we're going to say image and then images safe close up background dot png like so and then we're going to transform this to be half of its original size so we're going to say at half size. The next two images that we are going to add to this screen are going to go behind the actual dial and this is going to be a shadow that the dial is casting as well as another part of the dial that is not going to be rotating but it's just going to be a static image. So for that we are first of all going to start with the shadow. So we're going to say image, images, dial, shadow, dot png and then we're going to align this image so we're going to say align and this is going to be 0 0.48 and 0 0.5 
and then we're just going to lower the alpha for this shadow just a little bit so we're going to say alpha 0 0.3 like so and then we have to remember to resize this image to half of its original resolution so we're going to say at half size and then we can go ahead and add the other image so we're going to say image and then images dial backing i've called this image and then dot png and this one is going to be aligned perfectly in the center of the screen so we're going to say align 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 and then we'll say at half size and now we can go ahead and add the sprite manager object to this screen which is going to display the actual dial sprite so we're going to say add dial sprite manager like so and then we also have a reset button that is going to be overlaid on top of this dial sprite so for that we're going to say image button and then auto and the image path is going to be images and then dial reset button and then present s dot png and this one is also going to be aligned in the center so we're going to say align 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 and since this one also has a lot of transparent area in the actual image we're going to add a focus mask to this image button to make sure that only the opaque pixels can be clicked so we're going to say focus mask true and for now we're going to set the action for this image button to a null action and then we're going to implement an action later on so we're going to say action null action like so and then we're going to recess this so we're going to say at half size and the next image we're going to add is going to be the background image for the actual text that is going to display what the current number is that we have selected on the dial so for that we're going to say image images dial text background dot png and this one is going to be aligned at 0 0.5 and 0 0.17 and then we're going to resize this so we're going to say at half size and we're going to add the text that is going to go above this later on so for now we're just going to add the back button that is going to allow us to back out from this scene back to the scene one so we're going to say image button auto and then images back button percent s dot png and then the action for this is going to be action and then we're going to add a list so we're going to add two square brackets like so so we're going to say show and then we're going to refer to scene one and we're going to show this screen with a fade transition so we're going to add a comma after this string and then say fade and this is going to be the same as we have done before so we're going to say one one and one and the next action is going to be to hide this safe puzzle screen so we're going to say hide safe puzzle like so and then we're going to align this image button and i like to do that before the action so i'm going to say align and then 0 0.95 and 0 0.95 and then we're also going to apply the half size transform to this image button so we're going to say at half size like so now before this video gets too long i'm going to go ahead and stop it right here and we're going to continue in the next part so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video